Hi, I'm Mike Griffin, and in this video we're going to be talking about Garmin's RV770 LMT-S GPS system. Now, this GPS system is probably the most recommended GPS system for RVers. In previous videos that I've done, I've compared various apps and things you use for navigation and, of course, trip planning. And we've come to the conclusion, of course, that the best thing you can do for GPS for your RV is to get a dedicated GPS unit. You can go look at those videos to see things like uh, our comparisons between Copilot and other things that you might use to navigate Google uh, and these various GPS devices like the Rand McNally and the Garmin. But the Garmin RV770 is probably the most popular of all the GPS is currently being used by RVers, and for good reason. Now, remember that all GPSs aren't infallible. Uh, almost every one of them is going to take you somewhere that you don't want to go, or is going to take you the long way around. We've all experienced this. It's not a perfect science yet, but of all of them, I believe that the Garmin unit, the 770, is probably the best one. Now, LMT-S in the name what it means is lifetime maps and traffic updates, and the S means that you can use SmartLink, which is a phone app that connects to your Garmin with Bluetooth, and it allows you to see traffic updates and warn you of upcoming delays, and it will reroute you if it thinks it needs to. So uh, that's what the meaning of it is. Sometimes you'll see an NA after it. That means it has North American maps preloaded. The predecessor to the RV770 GPS was there, uh, pretty much, was the 660, which is still in use by a lot of RVers, and it's very popular as well. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about things like, uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of the features, and I'm going to divide this up into sections, so that if you want to, you can kind of find them and look ahead. I'll try to post down in the description where these things are in the video, so if you want to skip ahead to them, you can. We're going to be talking about the various features in the Garmin. We're going to be talking about the setup that you use to get it all set up for your RV and some of the apps and things that come with it. We'll also talk about navigation, of course, how to set it up for navigation and some of the navigation features that it has. And I'm going to be showing you these while we're, while we're doing it. Then we're also going to talk about the voice command system that it has, where you don't even need to touch it to have it do a lot of the things you need to do while you're driving. And we're also going to cover Smartphone Link and how to set that app and show you kind of how you make those connections between the two and how that can be helpful for you while you're driving. So let's go start diving into it now and take a close look at the Garmin RV770 LMT-S GPS system. To begin with, this is the Garmin GPS unit we're talking about and it comes with a uh, a power adapter that allows you to connect it to your 12 volt like a cigarette uh, plug. Uh, it can also be connected to a standard USB charging unit. We plug it into the USB uh, port on the wall, part of your wall outlet, and it can be used with that as well. I, that's how I do it when I'm driving in the RV. When I take it over to the truck we have, I always use the 12 volt adapter so I can leave the wires in the different vehicles, and I just unplug and take the unit with me. A lot of folks will ask about mounting these things. Now, to mount them, what I use is these NATO mounts. These NATO mounts are uh, pretty popular, and what they do is it's a uh, uh, it just it has an adhesive that sticks on your dash wherever you want to put it, and then it has this big magnet on here on the end, and the magnet uh, uh, can connect to your uh, device. It also comes with these round discs, they're very thin metal discs that will stick to the magnet and they have an adhesive on them. I added a little extra adhesive and it just so happens their little round disc fits very neatly into the a circle in the back of the unit where the car mount would go or the suction cup that they send with the unit. So I put that metal plate back here, glued it in really well and then I have the NATO mounts in the truck, one on the dash there and another NATO mount in the RV. So all I have to do when I get to either one is plug the power into the back of the GPS and then just plop it right up on the, the console. And that's how we kind of carry it around and how we use it. 
that makes it real easy to carry between the RV and the truck and we can go in and out and and we do it all the time every time we go out sightseeing or anywhere we always take this unit because it's so much better and nicer and easier to read than taking our phones so let's go take a look at the setup okay so when you first turn on the unit the LMT dash s the 770 it's you're gonna see a screen that looks like this now, there's some setup to do before you start using things, but this is how easy it is to use. All you have to do typically is just go to where do you want to go and look at the map. So it's not much easier, not much harder than that. Along the top, you see things that show your, um, you show your Bluetooth, whether it's on, whether we're in car or RV mode up here at the top, the time, um, you know, the temperature, all the various things that you would need to see uh, for your... Um, for, for using it, like Wi-Fi, battery life, etc. Now, let's go to setup here, settings, down at the bottom. And you can see that you have updates as one of the first thing. Now, one of the really cool things about the 770 versus the 760 is that I'm not going to go through where it shows you the updates, but it will do the updates. It will do the updates uh, manually. Uh, I mean, manually, uh, automatically and manually, but it will do them via your Wi-Fi. Now, previous versions, you had to connect external software to your computer to make this work, but now you don't have to do that. Now, all you have to do is um, just let it, uh, it'll tell you if it needs updates, and you say, go get them, and then it gets them over your Wi-Fi. Now, the vehicle profile, car or RV, when you're switching between your car or your RV, all you have to do is come to this screen and select the one you want. Right now, it's on car. You can select motorhome. It knows the dimensions of my RV, okay, here, and then you select it, and that's all there is to it. Now, when you select vehicle profile, you can also select this little wrench down here, and if you select the little wrench, you can enter the parameters for your RV, the height, the width, the overall length, the weight, max speed, anything you want to put in here that will help it choose roads for you to go on, which is a good thing. So yeah, this is how it's going to help route you to those routes that are safe for your vehicle. So uh, when you want to go switch back and forth, this is where you come. You want to come right here to vehicle profile. You can set map preferences for your for, for driving, like a 3D map view, you have a 2D map view. I like the 3D map view. And you can set various things like theme, tools, layers, auto zoom enabled, and, and more. Uh, you can also set uh, route preferences. Here's an example of navigation route preferences. Do you want to see route previews? Do you want to uh, calculate for faster time? Uh, what do you want to avoid? And these are the things I wanted to avoid. It has avoidances in here. I'll select that. You can see you can avoid U-turns, highways, ferries, carpool lanes, unpaved roads on this one. Now, and you can also do custom avoidances and you can add areas and roads you want to avoid. It does this by allowing you to touch them on a map and you can see uh, it'll, it'll avoid those roads when you get into that selection mode. Okay, um, you can also set up your wireless networks here. So that's very cool that you can set up both your Wi-Fi, which you'll want to do for your updates, and you can set up your Bluetooth, which you'll want to do for things like connecting to your smartphone link, which will allow you to get the traffic updates on this. Also, by selecting um, uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you, uh, you can get other options too. Like I say, you got the automatic updates, and it can connect to your phone via Bluetooth, so you can use it to make your phone calls. You can actually dial your phone from this, and you can answer calls on it using its speaker phone. So that's pretty cool. Driver assistance, you can do driver alerts and various assistance here. You can see these audible driver alerts. I have it set for speed limit changes, schools, slower traffic, and more. So you get a little tiny tone when that happens. You can hear a little tone and you'll know that you're approaching a school zone or a speed limit change or things like that. Now it has a block here for speed limit exceeded. I don't have that checked but if you are exceeding the speed limit it'll show you that on your map screen because it'll always show you what the current speed limit is and it will put a little red border around it if you're exceeding the current speed limit. Okay, so you can set it for other proximity alerts for custom points of interest 
and for red light cameras if you want. Um, some of that requires a, a, a subscription, I believe. And uh, so I don't use that very much at all. It, it has fatigue warning for suggesting breaks and whatnot. So um, now let's go back to uh, the display. Uh, you can display, uh, change of course your brightness, you can change your color mode, you can change uh, various timeouts for your display and more, and then you can change your traffic uh, mode. Here we've got tra traffic is enabled, smartphone link is required, that's the dash S in LMT dash S, and our provider for traffic is going to be smartphone link. Okay, um, now we've got units and time, units of measure. Most of this is pretty standard for the rest of these settings. Once you've come in here and set it up for your Wi-Fi network, and you have set it up for your RV's length and all the vehicle parameters for your RV, and you've also established the Bluetooth setup and made it pair with your phone, then you're all set to hit the road and use it to navigate safely under bridges and on roads that are, are capable of carrying the weight of your vehicle and a lot more than that. So setup's pretty easy. Uh, let's take a look at the apps. For apps, you touch apps and it comes with certain apps on the, the phone. You can easily get to the owner's manual. If you have Bluetooth connected, you can see the phone. Uh, you can dial your phone and get to your phone and whatnot. Uh, notifications, like for example, if your phone gets a uh, Facebook message because you have the Facebook app, that Facebook message can actually show up on this unit while you're driving and you can see what comes up in notifications. Smartphone link, it tells you about that. It can also link to a Garmin watch. It gives you uh, the traffic information and you can also get weather information where you're going or in any area you want it'll be able to pull up weather stuff for you uh, photo live is a subscription service where you can go and look at various uh, cameras traffic cameras in different places um, you also have a uh, live track which uh, can i think report where you are to someone else and track where you are and a big feature of this is that you can attach a backup camera. So they have a separate backup camera that you can attach to the unit. We're not gonna cover that here, but you can attach a backup camera and you can see what's in that backup camera on this unit. Another feature that I use a lot and we'll talk about more later is voice command. Um, when you have that, it will. when you say those two words, it will actually go into a mode that allows you to enter any of the navigation uh, commands you want to enter by just using your voice so you don't even have to touch the screen at all while you're driving and finally there's trip planner trip planner is used uh, to you can enter multiple stops if you've got a, a trip plan and you got let's say 15 campgrounds you're going to and places along the way if you want you can go ahead and key all those in right up front and it will um, it will allow you just to go to one and when you pull out of that one and you turn it on the next morning it's ready and it's already taking you to your next stop so trip planner can be very helpful if you want to line everything up ahead of time service history you can put in various uh, uh, if, when, if you choose it you can have it uh, you can give it some mileage like when you change your air filter you can put in what your mileage was when you got it and it just keeps records i don't use this uh, but some people would i imagine uh, foursquare and tripadvisor are built into this so when you go enter uh, locations when you go search for a campground or you go search for hotels or restaurants it will give you first uh, on top of the search results the recommendations from both foursquare and from tripadvisor so that's pretty cool and then it has a where i've been feature which can track where you've been um, well, and for parking spots, it'll uh, you can make a mark here, and it will uh, kind of remember where you are, and then you can go back and see where you where you were parked. I don't use that either. Okay, next up, we're going to take a look at actually using it for navigation. For navigation, it's very easy to use, and it's very very comprehensive because there are so many POIs that are already preloaded into the unit. POIs are points of interest and when you say where to by clicking on that you'll see how this comes up. Uh, you can program in where your home is so you can always go home. 
Uh, you can always go in and look at um, uh, services uh, for RVs and uh, and RV parks that you can filter. I'm in Savannah, so it's going to show a whole bunch of uh, RV parks in the area. And it's always key, when you do these searches, it always keys off of where you are unless you touch this and change it to one of these options like along my active route, near my destination, upcoming exits, or a different city. And so you can go back and you can do searches in a particular area which speeds up searches and of course gives you much more accurate results. When you're driving and you want to go do searches, you might want to search along your active route. For example, if you want to go look for a rest stop, you can tell it to go look for rest stops along your active route and it will tell you rest, rest stops that are coming up on your route and how far away they are and how long it's going to take you to get there. You can also, of course, like every GPS, you can enter an address and it'll prompt you for the uh, uh, the street number, the street address, or the street name, and it'll, it'll do auto-complete too. So when you enter a uh, street address, it'll, it'll show you various options that may match that street address. You can also look at saved locations and you can look at recent places that you've been to. So when you select re every place you've been to recently is listed in your recent uh, list every place you search for and that's really handy because you can choose that and it'll call up a list of various places you said you want to go and you can just click it without having to go redo your search. Now a really handy one here is in categories. When you select categories it's going to come up with all these cool categories that you can use like gas stations and RV parks and rest areas and restaurants. So from where I am right now and it's just going to search around Savannah, Georgia because right now I'm parked. I've, obviously I'm not driving and so I want to find gas stations in Savannah. Now it's going to look for them and tell tell them tell you about how far away they are. Notice that it's going to look for four square results to come up first and it's going to find these places based on where I am right now it's telling me that I'm 1.2 miles from a quick stop and you can see how far away we are and in what direction these other gas stations are from where I am now so you can see that pretty easily it's very easy to use and you can use this for any one of these things let's look at restaurants do I want all restaurants or do I want to look at various types of restaurants okay by browse by style it's what type of food you want to go to and it will find results based on that in Savannah Georgia and will tell you how far away they are from where I am right now so that's pretty cool and it has a lot of these POIs listed uh, listed in here they're already built in there's no downloading to do like you have to do with Google or other types of uh, places because they're continuously updated by the way I'm thinking that I probably get uh, at least uh, three to five map and software updates per year on this unit so it really is kept up to date for all of your locations and streets you can also use your trip planner to say remember we chose where do we want to go we can bring up the trip planner and choose a trip and it will bring that trip up and we'll be able to start going there uh, and of course it just goes ahead in the front and brings up some of these categories so you can go to them quickly like gas stations or whatnot places four square recommends attractions and things like that so when we want to go somewhere it's pretty easy to use and all we have to do is just uh, uh, say where to now the other big thing on this screen is view map wherever you are you can choose view map and view map is just going to show you a picture of where you are and if you're in the middle of a, uh, a navigation or a trip like you're out on the highway you're between campgrounds this of course will be your navigation screen and it would show you what your next turn is and everything here and we're gonna look at that here in a little bit so there's so many options here that uh, it's really incredible and it's such a big screen and so easy to use that you'll see that it's uh, very very nice to be able to have it in your rig of course, the, I, I skipped the volume settings, but that's pretty self-explanatory. So what we want to do next is we want to take a look at uh, some of the uh, navigation here. Now, if I say where to, and I'm in Savannah, and I want to go to, let's say, a, uh, uh, I want to go to Charleston, South Carolina. So I'm going to say, 
I want to go to a different city. And I want to go to Charleston. Where's my L E S T O N Charleston? I'll say Charleston. Okay, here's the choices it comes up with, and I'm going to choose Charleston, South Carolina. Notice it says searching near Charleston, South Carolina. Well, I don't know if there's a KOA there, but I'm going to enter KOA and hit hit uh, hit that selection. And what it's doing now is it's looking for KOAs near Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, the nearest it could find has KOA South Carolina. I don't know what that is without selecting it, but it found, found one in Mount Pleasant. I'm using this for the purpose of, uh, here's someone in Charleston, navigation. So I'm going to load the Charleston KOA and I'm going to select that and say go. Now notice it has some other options for information on the on the KOA. There's information on the KOA, including its phone number, and it's and it's going to tell me my arrival time, how long it's going to take me to get there. It's going to I can look at different routes, I can look at parking in the area, and I can look at weather in the area. So these are some of my options. Okay, I'm going to choose Charleston KOA again, and there's the parking and there's routes. These are things you could select from the other screen. So we're going to say go. It goes off, it calculates your route, and when it's finished calculating your route, it's going to talk to you. And it's going to tell you that... Please drive to highlighted route. So it's telling me, go drive the highlighted route. It's giving me a preview of my route, uh, I-95, 86A, to I-26, to US-78, and it's ready to go. Now, on this screen, I can zoom in over here. I can zoom in, or I can zoom out. And you have a lot of options at the bottom, but first, let's start at the top. This says continue to I-95. Now, if I was out on I-95 right now, it, it always says on the bottom where you are. It would tell me I-95, or if we're on some street somewhere. I'm in a campground, so I'm not on a street, so it doesn't say anything. But it will tell you the street you're on at the very bottom, and at the top, it tells you where you need to go. So it would tell you that you're going to be making a turn, and it would tell you um, what the exit is, and all of that good stuff up here at the top. If you touch that top bar, it will show you in text your turn-by-turn -turn driving directions. So here's all my turn-by-turn -turn driving directions, and it tells me, looks like I only have basically four turns to make to get to that campground. Once I leave the campground, I'm going to turn left on 95, take an exit at 26, take another exit at 205, and then I'm basically going to arrive at this campground. So that's a pretty easy trip. So we're going to go back here and we're back to navigation. Now now that we're on navigation, you can see that we're, we're going to have a real nice 2D view on here and I'm not going to show you all that in this video or else it's just going to go forever. And I don't want to make a one hour video here. So let's uh, just look at a few of these features. We're going to look at uh, when you touch arrival down here, you can set different things. See, it says plus different things to appear on your screen. I'm set for it to show me arrival time. You can instead have it show you how long it's going to take you to arrive. You will arrive in two hours and 10 minutes. Or you can show the destination difference, uh, excuse me, distance. Or you can say any via point arrival time. Like if I'm traveling and I say, hey, I want to stop at a pilot on the way, set it as a next place to go, then it will, uh, then it will, uh, I can see the via arrival time, uh, and I won't see the total time to where I'm going, I'll see instead the time that it's going to take me to get to my next stop. The speed over here, you can select it, and you'll see all kinds of good information about your status. You can set a trip odometer, I believe there's two of them, trip A and trip B. You can see all your arrivals, and your, all, all the other times we saw, distances, maximum speeds. I don't think I'm going to go 93 miles per hour. But you would see all that once the trip stopped, uh, started. And you would see all of the good statistics that you might want to have there. Okay. Over here on the right is a wrench. And you select that wrench. And you can say, hey, stop this trip. Or you can say, hey, what's up ahead? Or you can look at elevations. Okay. You can look at the elevation information, the weather information, or you can see, let me select it again, turns, the trip data, which is your trip A and B data, or traffic information. So there's a whole lot of great things you can see just by messing with this map. So 
what we want to do is we want to be able to program in a different place to go along the route. And so I'm going to program in like a fuel stop. And we'll do that using voice commands. So let's talk about voice commands next. Okay, so if we're driving along and we're on our way to Charleston, we're going to be looking at a map that tells us everything we need to do to get there. Now, if I want to stop somewhere like a pilot along the way, I can do it entirely without using my hands. So let's see how you would do that. Voice command. Say a command. Find place. Speak the name of a place. A long route. Pilot. Searching for pilot. Now it's off searching for where we're going to go. And when it comes back, we're going to select what we want by just saying the number of the place that it found. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. Select a line number. Two. Would you like to begin navigation? Yes. Start new route or add his next stop. Add his next stop. Now because we added it as a next stop, drive to highlighted route. it's going to take us there first. So if we select our turns now, we can see that we're going to go, we're driving to the pilot first. Okay, it's only 16 minutes away and we're going to get there. Once we're there, we're going to continue our drive on to the Charleston KOA. That's how easy it is to use that feature of the voice command. I don't want to say it very loud because it'll turn on. <laughs> it'll bring it back up. But that's how you use voice command. It's pretty easy. Now, um, that's pretty much it for navigation and how you use the navigation piece of it. It's very simple to use. It's important to know a few things about the map. When you're driving, it's always going to show on the top bar where you need to go next. It'll say what exit number. It'll show what turn you got to make. If you're about to come up on a, a like your final destination, it'll show a little block over here on the top left corner that shows a little uh, nudge out to the right or left showing which side of the road it's going to be on. Uh, when you're in traffic and you're coming up on a lot of exits, it will show you on it'll the right side of the screen will change and it will show you lane guidance. It'll show you the lanes. It'll show you a little graphic of the street of the big green sign over the lanes, and it'll show you some purple lines as to where you have to what lanes you need to be in. And she will even tell you. She'll say be in either of the two right lanes or something like that. So the lane guidance is great to help you navigate. It'll start really giving you lane gui guidance about a mile before you get to where you need to turn. Very, very handy. If um, you need to, you can always just select this up here and see your individual listing of all the turns you need to make so you can do a look ahead. That's very handy as well. So that's how you use the navigation portion of the unit. What we're going to do next is take a look at how you would link this to your smartphone. To use the smartphone link app with your phone, you of course have to go download it from your Play Store or from your uh, store for iPhones. And when you do that, you're going to see that it comes up on your phone as the smartphone link app up here. Now we select that app and it brings it up on your phone. It looks kind of like this. If you have Bluetooth enabled on your phone, it's just like pairing anything else. You can also enable Bluetooth on your GPS unit. So here it is uh, on the GPS unit and you can make the two of them connect. You can do this through settings and there is a place for wireless networks where you can go enable Bluetooth and you can make the connect. Now mine is connected to a Galaxy Note 8. It says it's connected. So we go back to the main screen here and we look over at the smartphone link app. Now I don't use any of the things on here like contacts or live track or pick location. I just don't use those things and, and that's okay. But, but uh, it is connected to my Garmin unit down here, it'll tell you. So all I do is load this app, make sure it's connected at the bottom, and then I simply just turn my phone off and put it over to the side while I'm driving. Now, since they are connected and my phone is able to get cellular data from Garmin, what it will do is it will spot any 
issues that I have for traffic coming up like delays, road closures, anything like that. If there's a delay ahead, a little box is going to slide out of the right here and it's going to say you've got uh, uh, light traffic on your route and it'll say a delay of 10 minutes or delay of less than five minutes and it'll tell you how far you've got to go and it'll show a little graphic of how far you've got to go until you encounter that delay and then it will tell you how long the delay is about how much it's going to add to your overall trip uh, I was on I-26 one time when uh, it came up all of a sudden and it said I-26 is closed ahead. Now we're driving on I-6, we're driving east, and it said I-26 is closed ahead. Do you? Uh, uh, we're going to reroute you. So it, it just took over and it rerouted me uh, around the closure. I It only added 10 extra minutes to my trip and before you knew it, I was down on I-95. But it successfully routed me around a very, uh, potentially very long delay because the traffic was stopped cold on I-95. I mean, I-26. I so anyway, uh, this is the overview. I don't want to take too long of the video. People don't like to watch long videos, but it's this is long enough. And it kind of gives you a lot of the features and how to use this wonderful GPS for RVs. So uh, give it a shot. Uh, see what you think. And... Um, Hopefully you'll have as much success with it as I have. Till next time, this is Mike. See you later.